Welcome everybody to uh, three o'clock on a Friday afternoon uh, from sunny Leeds. Uh, I see lots of faces from all over the country, so thank you for joining us uh, with customers, uh, colleagues, some people I know, some people I don't know. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Charlie. I am UK sales director of Big Change. Uh, I've been with the business for nearly five years and I am going to walk you through uh, some of the, what I deem to be intermediate level uh, financial functions of the system. So um, if you had the pleasure of joining me on my 10 a.m. session, I walked through some of the uh, more basic functionality. And this afternoon we're gonna go a little more advanced, not too complicated uh, for Friday afternoon, I'm sure you'd be delighted about. Um, but covering some of the more sophisticated um, bits and pieces in the system. Uh, if I get stuck, I'll ask Elena from Sherwoods because uh, she knows it uh, better than me. Uh, she had a good teacher back in the day, but she, she uses it day in, day out. So a couple of bits of housekeeping. Um, because we're now up to 78 participants, uh, I'm running today's session as a non-participating event. It just means you can't speak, I'm afraid. So you have to listen to my voice. Uh, for about an hour, and um, but I do encourage you to um, talk to each other via the chat function. So Big Change has a networking collaboration function, which I'm sure most will know about. That's the concept of trading jobs across the Big Change platform with other companies. So please feel free to advertise your services, uh, tell us where you are, tell us what you do through the chat function. Um, and then around 3.45, depending on how I get on, I will be inviting questions from you guys. So if you can hang fire till <coughs> about 3.45 when I prompt the questions and I will review the chat as we go. If they're too complicated, I'll uh, pass them on to Elena. Uh, but if I can answer them, uh, then I'll answer them for you. Uh, and I'll also encourage you to make good use of Road Crew, who are contactable, as I'm sure you know, and also the help site. Uh, not sure who knows uh, a lot about or anything about the Big Change help site, uh, but I'd encourage you to uh, log. Can you see my screen, Elena? Just give me a nod. Yeah, see the job watch screen. Excellent, thank you. Uh, I'd encourage you all to make use of uh, Big Change help site. So um, it's very comprehensive. Um, oh, I've got a, I've got a chat here. Let's have a look. Okay, it's going to share. No problem. So um, if we go down to, to here on the screen, I'm going to click on Help Center. This is going to bring up Big Change's own uh, wiki site with lots of rich functionality, um, user stories, videos, guides, templates, and so on. So I'd encourage you, if you're stuck on anything um, or, you're, or I'm not able to answer it today, uh, please make this your first port of call. Uh, we spend a lot of time updating it uh, and making sure that it, it, it's got all the latest functionality in. Okay, so um, I am logged into our demo site. Everything is entirely fictitious and made up, um, but there's lots of rich bits and pieces in here which will allow us to have a very good day in the life type uh, experience. So um, if you are on this morning's session, we looked at the concept of predefined invoicing items. So I'm hoping that because you've joined the intermediate session, um, the predefined invoice items mean something to you. And I wanna start us off with having a look at how we, um, first of all, copy price lists across between customers, and then how we might import predefined items specific to customers. Because uh, you've all got lots of different customers and updating predefined items one by one can be quite challenging, as I'm sure uh, you'll appreciate. So we have a few bits and pieces in the system to make your lives a little easier. And we'll focus on predefined items first. And then we'll get a little more complex and we'll go into the context, con the concept of job rates. So job rates might be something you're using and if not, 
Um, that's a little more compli complicated than predefined items, and we'll hit that second and go into some, uh, some more functionality. So if I look at copying predefined items over first, let me start that journey in CRM. So if you have joined the sessions on CRM, or if you're using the system as a, uh, as a, as a reasonably sophisticated user, uh, you will know uh, that if I type customer, customer name, bring up their record, and go into their financial section over here, and in price lists, these are all of the predefined items that I have given the customer a special price for. Okay, so when I go and raise a quotation for any of these items, it will bring through, if there's a special price, it will bring through the special price. Now let's imagine I take on another school tomorrow and I wanna give them all the same prices, all the same prices. Joe, can you hear me by the way? Excellent. So um, I might take on another school or another customer and, and I want to give them all the same prices. It's really quite simple. Um, I go into CRM against the company that I want to copy the prices over from. I click copy at the bottom, type in a contact. It might be uh, another school or, or absolutely anything. And I want to copy all those prices over to this particular contact. And it's a fake contact. I've searched for it and it's called uh, test fire doors. If I then click copy, it will just mirror those prices across. So a nice bit of functionality to help you when copying prices across. Now then, um, something that's gonna help you uh, either on day one or with updating on mass customer pricing. So um, when I have lots of price list items allocated to different customers, and maybe once or twice a year, I want to increase the price or reduce the price, or I want to add some uh, predefined items specific to a customer, we've recently made a development to allow you to import that, uh, that detail en masse. Okay, so let me walk you through how you do that. Really quite simple. Again, through CRM, if you're a savvy user, you will know that when I click import, it offers me a number of options. So if you tra trace your mind back to when you first came on board as a customer, or maybe you're new to us, you'll be looking at contacts, importing customers. We've just recently added the concept of importing predefined items. So it allows you to just import en masse a large number of catalog items against a specific customer. So as follows, I click predefined items, I click to import, okay? And in Blue Peter style, ones I prepared earlier, here is a spreadsheet. And you can see it's a spreadsheet. Um, it's, it's the price list you've seen with some alternative prices. And because I've been prepared, it's, it's already column matched against the import service. Okay, so um, these are all the column headers. You can create a spreadsheet yourself. There is a template to download on the help site. So this template is available on the help site. So if you're interested in downloading uh, and importing uh, predefined catalog items on mass, or even updating your catalog by customer, uh, and the key difference is, is from if, if you've done this before, the key difference to this development is it's added the contact reference. So by adding the contact reference, it will allow you to update the specific customer with those prices rather than just generically across the platform. Hoping all makes sense so far. Okay, so that's taken us up to 310. <clears throat> and we're now going to look at the concept of job rates. So in Job Watch, the concept of job rates um, applies when you charge a particular customer or set of customers a particular set of rates for a particular job type. So it might be a boiler service. So this customer or this type of customer pays this price for a boiler service 
But when they call us up on a weekend for an emergency boiler repair, they pay this type. And you can have an endless number of job rates associated with job types and then by customer if you wish. I'm going to just quickly start the process of showing you how to build that up. Um, we're going to follow that through in terms of a full end-to-end -end, um, user story, which is, a, a, I guess, a day-in-the-life uh, model. Uh, and hopefully that'll give you a more rounded view of uh, rates. And then just to get everyone super excited, as I'm sure you are, we have some new developments about around group job rates. See a wry smile there from a couple of you. Excellent. Good. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so um, we click into the admin section and we're going to look at financials and then, or rather in schedule and then job types. So we set our rates through the job type. Okay, so if I pick a entirely fictitious job type up here, okay, called CB first visit reactive repair. Now, those amongst you who've done this before will know, and those who haven't done it before will now learn to know, you access the rates through the job type, and then you click on financial. Okay, now I've already set a rate for this as follows. So you need to pay attention. So take a sip of coffee and, and pay attention for a couple of minutes. Okay, so this is where we set the parameters of the rate. It's simple when you know how, uh, and um, I'll walk you through it. So what I've set up here is a fixed price of £85, which might be a call-out rate or might be a fixed price for doing that job type. I've then said I want to charge the customer £75 for every hour after the first hour. Okay? I've then said, because I'm mercenary, I want to round it up to the nearest 60 minutes. So here's a test for you, those who are listening. If I do a job for one hour and one minute, what's that gonna cost the customer? Elena's writing it down, so you're gonna show the screen. Okay, fine. Okay, so it's 85 plus 75 is the answer. Okay, so your 85 is your fixed price. It might be your call out rate. And then you've, you've gone one minute into the next hour. So it's going to charge you for the whole hour. And I'd encourage you to play with the rate card to understand it in greater detail. There's a few more bits and pieces I want to show you. So you might have different rates for different job types at different days and different times of the day. So what we're working towards is building up a set of rate cards. So when you go and book a job for a particular customer, JobWatch will automatically tell you what to charge that customer, maybe with the addition of any parts you may have used. Okay, so this little bit at the top here is a really important thing to click on because what we can now do also, we can set a rate by the specific customer. So this rate here that we're building against the job type is the rack rate, if you like, so the standard rate for this job type. We might give a customer either a special rate or an increased rate. Maybe they're in Newton Abbott, like you guys in Sherwoods, miles away from anywhere, and you charge them extra for the travel time. Okay, you might apply a different rate. So let me show you that. Let me save that, and let me go into CRM, look at Allerton School, and let's look at the rate card for this particular customer. So in exactly the same way that we build rates for job types in the admin section, we build them here against the specific customer. So because I'm building it against the customer, what JobWatch will do is, when I go and book a job for this job type, the system says, is there a rate for this job type, number one? And if there's a rate for this customer for this job type, apply that rate as preference. Okay, really simple to do. Um, I add it in the same way, and here's what I prepared earlier. So this customer pays an inflated fixed price, but we, it's just a fixed price. There's no hourly rate applied here. Okay, so when I go and book a job for that customer, it 
will apply that rate regardless. Okay, so let's work that through. So I'm gonna to pretend to book a job <coughs> for that customer, for that job type, and show you what Job Watch does. So as I'm sure you will all know, if I go into schedule, I click new job. I select the job type in question, which I'm sure you know because you're all paying attention. Reactive repair. And I'm going to book it out today at four o'clock. My trusty alias William George. Click save. I'm going to book it out to William. If we dip into that job, we can see already. Got a selling price of £250 ready to go. And that's because it knows the rate. Now, those who are paying super attention will notice there's a cost here as well. There's a cost there as well. The top line is the theoretical cost of the labour when William is on site. And the bottom row is the cost of travel. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't apply a selling price in the rate card for travel. I could have done, but I didn't. So £35 is the cost of William for an hour. This job is set as a 60-minute 60 60 operation. And if we go into the back office and we look and we see or rather into fleet and resources, and we look and we see what we pay William, you will see here that his default hourly rate is £35. Okay, uh, some smiley faces, yes, that's me. Uh, I'm not an engineer, um, absolutely not. Couldn't do the job, I'm afraid. It's too, too challenging for me. Um, so yes, there's my fake profile. And you can see he's got a default hourly rate of £35. And that's what the rate card or the job margin analysis looks at. It's really quite simple. But it's really powerful. Allows you to have a good grasp. So you can see there's a selling price of £250. Now, if that job takes two hours or three hours or four hours, because the, fix, because the selling price is fixed, it will keep that £250 the same, but the cost prices will, will change dynamically. So when that job is completed, JobWatch will calculate for you uh, an actual job margin. The bottom is calculating the sum of the travel time and the travel distance. And the travel time includes the cost of the person for the duration of the journey. And if anyone knows where I live in Leeds, this place is just around the corner, which is why the travel cost is really low. Okay, hope you've learned something. 20, almost 20 minutes in. So, in the same way that we looked at importing of predefined items, there is also the ability to import job rates. Now, the job rate cards are much more sophisticated and complex so the import template naturally is more sophisticated so again we go into crm and we click import now this is particularly useful if you're new to the system and you want to get job rate ready from day one but it's also useful if uh, and, and it might, might apply to somewhere your job rates are all over the place and you want to cleanse them and make sure you've got the right customers with the right job rates. So less admin work to do in the office on a day-to-day -day basis. So <coughs> I click import, okay. I click a different template, click to import, pick out a spreadsheet and I'll just show you lots more columns here, lots more column headers. <coughs> Simple to do, time consuming to do from the off, but really good housekeeping to do. Really, really good housekeeping. 
and you can update prices the same way okay you can update prices the same way so you might put an increase on next year you just change the price on the spreadsheet there's some really useful tips okay so um let's take that a step further so um oh, i'm gonna, gonna chat here hold on come to that good question does the importing predefined or rate data overwrite existing data uh yes it overwrites it, it, it updates it updates that, that allows you to, to update your price lists i think that's the i think that's the purpose of the question okay so um some of you will understand the concept the concept of group jobs so a group job is where you go to a customer to do a job but it lasts more than one visit okay so it might be an install it might be a project all manner of things where you go more than once and quite specifically you know from the off you're going more than once so i'm going to use the example of a boiler install so we know that a boiler install uh, there's a few days of install there's some snagging there's some electrical work some gas work and we're going to play with a multiple day job now we call them group jobs and we have this function called group job templates so it's really handy for scheduling but we've recently added the function to allocate a fixed price to that particular project type so when you go and create this project you can have a pre-allocated fixed price to save you time when generating it so again more around this concept of rates so i'll work it through with you and let's start off at the beginning so in my account admin we're going to schedule group job templates job group templates so lots of examples here and i have a boiler install two-day boiler install now this webinar isn't about scheduling so i'm not going to dwell on this too much but please email me or email road crew or when the video is available have a look at danielle's very good um uh, two training sessions where i'm sure she'll be covering group jobs or hang on a few days and email road crew for the video of Danielle's sessions, which she did last Monday. Here's a group job. And the concept is that I know this particular project type incorporates those five jobs. Might be different days, might be different people. But I always know that when I do a boiler install, I need to allocate those five different visits over two days. And you'll notice here this financial button. This financial button is saying, would I like to add fixed price to that group job type or would i like to use the rates from each individual job type within the group to build up my group job costs and i'm going to use the example of we're going to apply a fixed selling price to this group of jobs so um, i encourage you to practice uh, if it's your first outing it might seem complex but trust me it's really simple and it's a really great feature so what i've prepared earlier we have a look over here perfect <coughs> so if i click into that group of jobs which i've created earlier those of you that understand group jobs you will see there's five unallocated jobs and in the same way that when i created one job there was a rate ready to go if i click on the group job financial ledger up here it has one line item ready to go so some really useful functionality if you're doing group jobs if you're not doing group jobs i encourage you to explore them your next level up would be going to group job financials okay so I've only got an hour, unfortunately, so I, I can't focus on that too much. But there's some really nice functionality around um, 
around group job financials, and I encourage you to explore that in more detail. Okay, so um, with a quick um, sip of water, um, I need to get my skates on. We're going to look at electronic document sign-off. So um, some of you will know, some of you won't know, that JobWatch has some amazing functionality that will allow you to, to send a quotation, uh, be it an order form or a contract document, however you do your sales order forms or quotations, to a prospect or customer and have them sign it off digitally. So um, it's relatively new functionality. Uh, certainly if you've signed with Big Change in the last few months, <coughs> that's how we send our order forms. It's a really great way of starting off the customer digital journey. And actually, it's a much easier way and quicker way to get your quotation signed off because customers can do it digitally. Okay, so if I look at a quotation, and it'll be a quotation that I haven't yet sent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So here's one here. It's a fake quotation, and it's for this particular customer. We can have a look at if we want. It's ten thousand pound. So, okay. Let's have a look for quotations for my trusty contact. Okay. Right, you know what, let me create one from scratch. Let's start the journey. Because some of you might want to see it in a bit more detail. Okay, we've got a quotation. It's for a full service pack, okay? We click quotation, keep it nice and simple. Um, we're going to click save. Okay, so it's here. It's specifically, it's not sent. So I click on that and I'm going to email the quotation. Now I'm hoping that most of you have know how to email quotations. I'm not going to dwell on that, but I'm going to click on email. I'm going to select template. In that template, if you're paying attention, you will notice the accept quote here link. I'm going to show you how you build that in a second, but let me show off first and show you how it all works. So I'm going to select the person to send the quotation to. I'm going to click send. I'm then going to look in my fake Gmail inbox and see what happens. Just loading. Okay, perfect. So I have a quotation from Charlie at Big Change. Okay, so let's follow through the process. It's attached down here. Um, before um, we go on another step, let me just explain. This email is called, is built using big change templates. If you're interested in knowing more about how to build email content, email design, you need to check out templates either through the help site or look out for the video on templates. My colleagues did a session earlier in the week. Okay, so I click accept quote here, and this pops up. Okay, I can view the quote by clicking on the quotation. Okay. And I can proceed to accept the quote. So it's our way of doing a DocuSign. Name of signatory, Charlie, job title, Chief Coffee Officer, PO number. Okay. Do I agree to the terms? Yes. Accept and legally sign the quotation. So by doing that, couple of, well, three things have happened. Three things have happened. 
Number one, that quotation is now marked as accepted. Okay, the administrator at Big Change who sent me the quote has received an email to say, well, hey, we have a new order. And number three, I have also received a new email to tell me what I've just signed up for. Trust me, it's coming in a few seconds. So, if I go back into here, okay, this is the one we just did. Okay, can you see that? It's now being marked as accepted at 3.30. If I dip into the quotation here and look in activity, okay, you can see the detail. Chief Coffee Officer has given me a purchase order number to proceed. <clears throat> That's how we do our quotations order form acceptance at Big Change. And I would encourage you to uh, have a look at that. Okay, let's see if my Google uh, address has just received it. One more, one more go, and then I'll give up and come back to it later. Okay, so what I said I'd do is show you how you build that email content. Really easy to use. I'm not going to spend too much time on templates, but it's part of the financial journey. So, in admin, I have templates. There is a session on templates. Feel free to check it out. So, if I look at the template that I showed you. This was the email that I just received. It's got a nice header. Okay. It's got some body. Okay. Rather, wrong template. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's got a nice header. And in the body of the template is this here. The way I do that is I build the email content and I select this really important keyword, quote acceptance link. And you just put that in the email and the fairy dust happens automatically. Okay, so. You put that acceptance link in the email. You decide what you call it. Please sign your order by clicking here. And the rest is down to you to learn templates. Really simple to do. You apply the link to the email and that gets fired off to the customer. Okay, so that's our version of DocuSign and I'd highly uh, I, I'd, I'd encourage you to have a look at that. Now, um, 10 to 12 uh, more minutes on, 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 on product, and then we'll go to a Q&A. So, um, so now I'd like to talk to you about online payments, so credit card payments. So some of you will already know about this. Some of you might not. So um, we JobWatch integrates with a payment uh, portal called Judo Pay, which then integrates with your chosen uh, credit card payment uh, system. Um, I'm not going to go into massive detail on Judo Pay. That information is available on the health site. I want to show you how you set up and uh, administer the process of an online payment. Okay, so um, typically it's at the uh, invoice stage. Let's find uh, an invoice, okay? And within um, the invoice, um, I can do one of two things. I can, I, can, I can post the online payment link to the customer either by clicking into payments, so within the invoice or the quotation, the pro forma invoice, has to be an invoice, I click payments, and I can grab the online payment link. Okay, you can also pre-authorize or I can take a payment right there. And I want to show you how to send an online payment link. So you can click the online payment link and drop it into your own email. Alternatively, you can email that invoice to the customer 
okay, with an online payment link embedded in the template. As follows. Okay, or let me pick uh, this one here. So let's run that. And let's see how it looks. And while that's coming through, this is my contract confirmation from before. So again, it's another another template. Thank you for your quote acceptance. And here's what you signed up to. Really neat certificate of completion. Waiting for my online payment link to come through. Gmail's a little slow. Give it 10 more seconds, and I'm going to move on to the next interface. Okay, I'll come back to it. So um, when it comes through, the email has a really simple click to pay, enter your credit card details, click pay, and then the invoice is marked as paid. So if credit card payments is something you do, uh, feel free to uh, have a look at that in a bit more detail. Okay, so mindful of time, one of the things I wanted to do is to look at consolidated invoices. Okay, so something that I get asked about a lot. Okay, and let me just slim down the, the list. Consolidated invoices, really simple stuff. This is a, a neat way of lining up multiple invoices and placing them in one nice, neat document. So it's something you'll all be familiar with, but you might not be so familiar with how to do it uh, in, in, in JobWatch. Okay, so first things first, you have to select invoices that are not sent. If they're sent, they may have already passed into your account system either through the integration or alternatively. So if we line up the invoices that we want to consolidate, we go, of course, we can only consolidate those invoices aligned to one customer. We click consolidate. And JobWatch gives you three options, um, depending on how you want to present the invoice. The first one is exactly as it says, it says, import each line item from the selected documents as a line on the new invoice. So it brings through every single line from all invoices. Option two will summarize all the line items on each invoice and bring them through as one line. That's how you might like to do it. It really depends on how much information your customer demands of you when presenting them with an invoice. And then option three uh, it'll consolidate the invoice into one long consecutive document. So invoice one, invoice two, invoice three. We're going to go for this option. And then it says, what detail would you like to appear in the line items? You might want to show for every job, for every invoice, the corresponding order number in the line item. You might like to show the actual job start time the day you did the job so if i click ok there you go hey presto really simple okay so there's my new invoice so what consolidating invoices does is it wipes away all the previous invoices and replaces them with this one I encourage you to have a look at that. It's created me now one big £31,000 invoice. Okay? All makes sense. Good. A few things that are worthy of note before I go on to the next section and finish off is <clears throat> some customers 
and indeed your customers might want you to invoice for particular types of works, uh, type of works within one invoice. So maybe project work has to go on one invoice and reactive work on another invoice and so on and so forth. And what we can do is we can drill down further to see invoices by job types. So if the customer says, I want you to give me two consolidated invoices in a month, one for reactive repair and one for project works, where those are two different job types. To have a play with that functionality, I don't have time to do it justice today, uh, but consolidating is, is, is of great value. Um, before I uh, turn away from invoicing, I wanted to briefly mention Sage, uh, SageLink. Okay, so some of you will be Sage users, some of you will be zero users, and some of you will use other packages. So um, we haven't got time to do it today, um, but certainly um, we have a really savvy dynamic link with Sage, uh, which, is, which is Sage 50, which is a two way link passing contacts, uh, payments, uh, and all manner of clever things between JobWatch and Sage. Have a look at that. And I'm also pleased to tell you that we're just about to go live with a Zero integration. So any customers that are using Xero, uh, please contact us for more information on that. Okay, so last but by no means least, we wanted to, someone's asked me to look at purchase orders within a job. So. In the basic session this morning, we looked at creating a purchase order on its own. And some of you who are really savvy with the system may know already, some may not, but there is a really neat way of creating a PO against a job. So here's a job I've created earlier. And in the job financials, we have two line items currently. We want to add a line item because on this job, we need to use a door fixing kit. Just a random predefined item. We want to mark it up by 50%. Okay, really simple to do. Please explore that feature in a bit more detail. We now want to buy that thing from a supplier. Okay, so. We can tick a box for the line items that are relevant to us. And we only want to buy this thing. So we click it and we get a number of options. Create financial document from the line items. I want to buy this thing. So I click purchase order. and I follow through the purchase order process, which I'm sure is apparent to everyone. Let's just have a quick go. We're buying it from big change. Delivery site, click there, click save. And it places the purchase order against the job. So really very handy. And if obviously if I have lots of line items, it will add them to the purchase order at the same time. So it's a really simple way of managing purchase orders from within a job, which is then going to give you a job margin. 